been so difficult to uh, educate the public. Uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's, like it's it's a difficult problem. That's why, but as was mentioned this afternoon, citizen climate lobby is has been growing exponentially, and the lawmakers they visit they visited every legislator, every uh, representative and senator, and they continue to come back. And they're very polite. If they can't meet with the senator and only with one of his assistants, then they meet with him and they come back again. And uh, so I have see some possibility that we can influence the democratic process, but it's they're fighting against a headwind uh, of um, special interest, which is well funded. Uh, do you think INDC is back to, to the FCC? Do you think INDC is, as proposed by now, already preclude the, the RCP 8.5 scenario, the worst case scenario in the FCC's proposal? Well, I don't see, you see, I don't think these are effective because even though, you know, it, they will reduce emissions someplace, but there are some countries which are not putting any limit and that you can't blame them. I showed a chart that showed India is almost invisible. Their carbon footprint has been near zero and they have a huge number of poor people that they would like to, uh, to raise out of poverty. And how are they doing it? With coal. If you look at their energy, it's almost all coal. Um, so we have to, you know, the, the West has an obligation, it seems to me, to help them find clean energies for everybody's uh, benefit. We, uh, that's, uh, but, you know, that's, uh, these, I just don't think these promises of individual countries are really very meaningful. It's like Kyoto. It may be a little better, and some things, I, I don't mean to uh, say that nothing useful is being accomplished here. You have things like the investment fund uh, for clean energies, uh, that, that may make a significant difference. Um, but, and it's certainly good for countries to look at their carbon footprint and try to figure out ways to reduce it. Uh, but if we don't have a price on carbon, a simple, honest one, we're not going to solve the problem. Uh, the, the, the French Ministry of Environment said that uh, one thing they were not trying to do here at the COP meeting was uh, picking up the carbon budget, uh, chopping it into pieces and distributing it among uh, countries. Do, do you think it would have been a, a approach if it would have started like this? No, from no, the you, could, you could never solve the problem that way. Uh, because any, what, what would India demand? It would demand an amount which by itself would cook the planet. Because they would say, well, why don't we get what the United States get? Mm -hmm. And the reason is that we're all in the same boat. And if we don't plug the holes, we're all going down. Uh, so we need to find a way to get them energy which is as cheap as an honest price on coal. And, um, and, and I think India will do very well because uh, people uh, work hard and they are <laughs> bright. Uh, but it needs to be a, we need to help them find a way, which is a clean energy way. Dr. Hanson, you first warned the world about the dangers of global warming decades ago. How much more severe is the crisis now than when you first spoke out? Well, we're now clearly at the edge. We, we don't know. Some uh, glaciologists um, who work with the Antarctic ice sheet think that we've already passed a point where we're going to lose the West Antarctic ice sheet. And that would mean a few meters of sea level rise. I, I'm not sure that's the case. I think if we restored the energy balance so that right now we're pouring energy into the ocean because the planet is out of energy balance. But if we reduce the atmospheric composition of greenhouse gases to a level that the planet is back in equilibrium, or even slightly on the other side, so that it's cooling off a little bit, then um, I, I think we have good reason to hope that the ice sheets will not lose that much mass. And it will be a sea level change that we can 
deal with. But if it's many meters so that all, every coastal city becomes dysfunctional, then it's uh, the economic consequences are so great that uh, it's, uh, it's going to be global chaos. Sir, it's very clear that the capitalism demands more energy. <coughs> Do you think the capitalism is going to spark climate change? Uh, well, I think, you, you know, Naomi Klein believes that, uh, that we have to destroy the capitalist uh, system in order to solve the problem. I, I don't think so. I think, you know, I, as I mentioned today, I've met with utility leaders and, and even uh, oil company executives. And, you know, when you meet with them, they're people, they're normal people who have children and even grandchildren. And they, they say that they would like to be part of the solution. But they also say that the government has to give the rules that allow them to continue to make money for their stockholders. Uh, and uh, so that's what would be the effect if you had a, 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 a specified rising uh, carbon fee, they would change their investments and we could move to clean energies. Oil companies could become energy companies instead of oil companies. It's, it's possible. A lot of the oil companies have tried. Yeah, the energy companies, but, but and they've not done good at it. Right, because there was not the rising carbon fee. But That's the problem. Technically speaking, the year over year of uh, the fossil fuels is high compared to the renewables. Do you think that the renewables is going to give energy for the entire globe for their sustenance? Not any time soon, because renewables are intermittent. You know, you need, uh, utility executives will tell you they need dispatchable energy. They need to have the energy when, to meet the demand. And uh, renewables can help. You know, the sun will, does shine in the daytime when you have a high demand, so it can help. But basically, uh, you know, if you wanted to rely totally on renewables, then you've got to have energy storage, and that becomes very expensive and uh, the, the kind of devices they have for storage also take a lot of uh, rare earths and things so there's a lot of pollution associated with that so by itself I don't think that's likely uh, in any time that we foreseeable uh, we're, we need um, we need baseload electricity in addition to renewables. Dr. Hansen, um, you spoke about ethics in the beginning of your talk. Um, there's um, been a lot of talk around biodiversity loss uh, and the Red Plus program. What role do you think Red Plus and deforestation has? It, it will have uh, a, a huge role. You know, what we showed in our paper, which in which we set the goal of 350 parts per million CO2, indicated we cannot, we cannot get there without the help of more storage of carbon in the soil and in the biosphere. And in fact, we, we, we estimated you'd need to get 100 gigatons of carbon back into the biosphere and, and soil. And that's a lot. Uh, but I, I think that's possible. It would require improved uh, agricultural and uh, uh, forestry practices. Uh, and reforestation of marginal lands that are not useful for agriculture. Uh, so there's, there's a lot of potential for storing carbon there, but only up to some limit. Maybe it's more than 100 gigatons, but it, you know it's not uh, it's not infinite. So we, that's why we've got to cut off this fossil fuel source because there's no way we can balance all of the fossil fuels. Do you have to leave now, or you want to stay longer? There's one, one question because we have been every time talking about the technology, but we are talking, not talking about the behavioral change in the attitudes. Because when you see the American uh, per capita emissions, it's, it's something where. Uh, well, you know, in. some people think that we can solve this by changing our lifestyles and our behavior, but uh, frankly, I find that it doesn't matter where you go, people aspire to things. You know, as China starts to get wealthy, people want 
the luxury of a private vehicle. And you can't, how can we tell an Indian, the Chinese, that they cannot aspire to having an automobile? What we have to do is say, well, we've, we've got an automobile that doesn't produce carbon. <laughs> you know, we're gonna have to have electric cars or, or uh, you know, if we have fossil, if we have carbon-free electricity, we can make liquid fuels, uh, which are carbon-free. Uh, so it, the problem is solvable and, and we can't, I don't think you can ever solve the problem by telling people don't aspire to a higher lifestyle because it, that's just human nature. Mr. Ramadan, you said we have to stop using carbon fossil fuel and then, but the renewable energy are not enough. So where do we get the energy the world needs? Well, you know, if you put a price on carbon that's rising steadily, then the alternatives will compete. And it will be different in different countries. Um, we're going to have a, a news conference tomorrow, I think it's tomorrow or the next day, on, on uh, technology and nuclear power. But it's going to be different in different places. Uh, and I do think, if you if you look at China and India, and the, the, most of their emissions are from coal. Most of and that is has accelerated to such an extent, and is so huge. I don't see any way that they can face that down zero without uh, advanced, improved, safer nuclear power. And both governments have to make that decision. They they intend. They would like to have the most advanced technologies. Uh, and, and, uh, so for them, it's nuclear power. I, I think in those in those two countries, I think that, uh, I think that nuclear power has to be a major part. They're going to phase down. You know, they're making products for much of the world, and they're you can't fund their big steel mills with solar panels. <laughs> they need a, they need a large amount of, of energy. Uh, so yeah, I think that nuclear is certainly is part of the uh, solution, especially in those two countries. We will see how that goes. Let things compete, and countries can say, well, we don't want that. Then that's fine. But then you need something else. Something else is but again, this is the biggest way. Solar power, 